and we are live happy days <laughs> hi everyone uh, we had some serious technical issues going on for the last 20 minutes so i can only apologize for being a little bit late um so today we are joined by mark who's going to be talking to us about all things funnels related so for those of you who don't know mark i'm going to ask him just to do a little brief intro to who mark nicholson is if that's all right yeah sure so um as mentioned i'm mark and um, i help business owners kind of get their business online through utilizing um online marketing strategies and, and funnels specifically to help people just get better results with their online marketing through utilizing funnels and um, obviously we're, we're going to talk more about that today and more about what funnels are how you can use them in your business what the benefits are and you know how you can pretty much get started using them yourself that's very nice that's nice good. and express introduction yeah that's good <laughs> awesome so i think what mark and i have decided to do um in terms of where to pitch uh for today's talk is that we're going to just assume that you're all funnel novices and you don't really know you know much there is to know about funnels whatsoever so mark i think if we kick off just trying to explain exactly what a funnel is in terms of just breaking that down. I think it's a term that a lot of people are familiar with, but perhaps I'm being asked to describe exactly what a funnel is and what it means for, for business owners. Is that is that something you could elaborate on? Yeah, so I think a lot of people understand the word funnel, um, but more of in a different context. So I think when people are taught business in at like university or at schools or on business courses, they are taught funnels as in the, the aspect of kind of, of um, What's the word like building awareness first kind of like nurturing the relationship and turn that relationship into a lead and it's all it's almost like an old school methodology of like a funnel but what we're talking about today is a little bit different so that type of funnel is is mostly all about before the sale like before anything happens building awareness this is like people searching on the internet looking at blogs watching videos then they are generally looking at different competitions that are out there looking who which which person to choose from and as a business owner, you have to take people through this funnel. But that's like the old funnel method that we're not going to talk about today, but we're going to talk about the new funnel method, which is all around actually um, utilizing online marketing to scale people through the lead nurture phase and actually get them to buy your products and services um, through utilizing kind of online marketing strategies through a sales funnel and upselling them along the way. And the beauty about doing this type of funnel is that you actually you capture people where they are in their current kind of present situation so no matter if somebody is just kind of looking for advice you capture them or if they're looking kind of kind of like to get started with a product or service that you offer the full actually captures them at that stage as well and um, so they, they, they are both kind of built like a full in both of these examples but one the full app we're talking about today the online marketing funnel is is just more specific really it, it's got a specific purpose and it takes people through a journey more so than just um, a generic old school method. Cool. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, no, that's really, really good actually in terms of an explanation because I know that, you know, there's so many different types of funnel and obviously we're going to be exploring that. So really skipping ahead a little bit, guys, uh, Mark and I are going to kind of break this down into two parts. So today is going to be about exploring what funnels are, kind of what role funnels play within a wider marketing strategy and just kind of get you to know the basics of why you need to be knowing about funnels and also how that fits in alongside things like your Facebook advertisements, etc. And then we're going to be giving a bit of a deeper dive in part two as to how you can start working with funnels and actually the construction process of the funnel as well. So I think taking the explanation that you've just gone through, Mark, and just explaining how that applies to like a wider marketing strategy, because I think almost particularly at the moment, people are trying to explore what really it is that they should be using in terms of their marketing and trying to generate new leads in their business now that a lot of services have actually gone online. Yeah. So could you explain to everybody in the community why it is that they need to be aware of funnels and, and what the value behind funnels is? So everyone's kind of aware of a website. Like everyone thinks they need a website. It's like the most important thing in the world. I must be online, I must have a website. And that is, it's true to a certain degree. But with websites, if you can build a website, but if no one kind of visits it, it was just a waste of your time, your money. It's like, it's not, it's not really doing anything. It's, it's, a, it's an asset, but it's not an asset that's really working for you. And it's not a, a website isn't a system that you can implement and let it, churn and go and go and go and go whereas a funnel is 
because a funnel takes people through a journey in a specific journey whereas a website if i visit let's say to someone's website they've got all this information about themselves they've got all this information about the product and services they've got all this information about everything else whereas if i'm just looking for my problem someone to solve my problem i don't want to know about all this it's just like it's just too much information and one thing is certain that if you give people too much information things that aren't relevant especially to what they're looking for they'll get confused and nobody who's confused ever buys they'll never make a purchasing decision whereas with a funnel a funnel actually is talking to people on one specific pain point normally and that's how you'll attract them into the start of the funnel and then you'll bring them through the funnel scaling them up what's something called a value ladder which is generally um value versus cost so how much value you're giving someone in price and we scale them up so the higher the value of something the higher price and it, the the funnel actually works by doing that whereas a website can't do that it's not built to do that a website is, is almost like it's a brochure to you to tell the world about yourself and um, so if you run an advertising campaign to say driving all this traffic to your website that's great but they land on one of your pages and then they might get um someone else might divert them off onto another page or another page and it just takes them it takes them away from the core thing that you they were looking for in the first place or the, the core thing they want so the funnel every aspect of a funnel has one objective and that is to solve that pain point or to persuade the customer or the person that that you are the person that can help them solve that one pain point that drew them into the funnel anyways so if somebody has back pain if somebody has a sore leg if somebody has uh, neck problems that funnel is talking about that problem and it's taking them through the product and services and all of the copy on there and everything in that is, is specifically for it. So it really allows business owners to position themselves, their products, their services, um, at, at, like I say, at the different stages that the buyer is in. So if I'm a buyer, and, well, if I'm a potential customer and I've got a buy it back and then um, I kind of see something on Facebook or an advertisement somewhere that, you know, there's some top tips on how to solve a buy it back, I'll be interested in that. Okay, well, cool, I'll have a look at that. I'll become a lead. Then the next thing that potentially that business owner could then show me is um, booking for a consultation at your local um, clinic to kind of get your bad back, bad back solved by a GP or by you know, a physiotherapist and then so on and so on. So I go through the funnel and if my back if my back pain is in that serious a condition, I'd be like, okay, actually I will book in. So whereas if it wasn't that bad, I'd be quite happy just becoming a lead on the lower level. So you can really take people through the different types of tiers of the products and services that you've got to kind of fit fit with where they are in their kind of business. And so it really helps to kind of just do all that. And it also helps businesses to increase the average order value. And um, because if you are, what most businesses do with their marketing is they'll just run an ads campaign. The ad campaign will direct them to potentially one of these lead magnets or some advice, a blog, a video, or potentially like a free consultation or to buy a product and that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything else. There's no upsells, there's no additional information. And um, so it has like one thing, whereas with a funnel, it's all about maximizing every interaction that you have with a customer, but at the same time, I'm not doing it in a, a salesy way. It's always, we're, we're here to help, no matter what pain that you have, no matter what problem you have, no matter what level you're at. Then, yeah, that I think that, that explanation really makes it clear in terms of the way that I'm kind of focusing on that right now is that something like a website, which we know usually costs a few hundred pounds, is almost like the shop front and you're almost kind of relying on somebody walking past the shop in order to take notice of that. Obviously, we've, we've talked about SEO and stuff before on the community, but with funnels, it's almost kind of you, you've taken that customer into the shop and you've got that person at the front sales desk who's actually doing a bit of a guided tour you know, around your business and saying and making recommendations that's specific to that particular person. So you mentioned your pain points there. So you're almost kind of bringing a product or bringing a service to someone who's who's just a, like a bit of a warm customer, if that's how you want to phrase yeah. it. Yeah, so the website, that's a perfect example to using the shop. So if you walk into a shop without any guidance, thinking, okay, well, does this shop have what I want? You look around at all its products, all its services, like, okay, well, no, it doesn't. It might have just hidden somewhere. <laughs> you don't know. But with a funnel, it's like being met at the door of the shop and somebody saying, okay, how can I help you? All right, so you're looking for a TV today. Brilliant. Well, here's our selection of TVs. Which one do you want? They're like, okay, I'll have this one. Well, with that, do you also want um, you know, to get this um, sound, surround sound system with that? It's a great additional extra. Yes. <laughs> how about now actually you know, 
give you I don't know, what else whatever what else goes well with the TV or with surround sound, DVD players, and um, other things around the house. So it's just kind of adding additional value, 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 you know, for, for the customer that they want. Mm. So that's quite a good example. Yeah, absolutely. I think in terms of, you know, another point just to really emphasize there is what you said about obviously you know those secondary and tertiary sales is that i think so many people are so focused on the initial lead that they almost kind of once they've made one sale they then just kind of crack on into finding new customers rather than actually utilizing the existing customer base and making sure that they are generated second third fourth sales by obviously upselling yeah so that's very true in the sense of yeah okay your your, your most profitable buyer is your current buyers so people who are already buying off you and um, because some people do just get into that buy mentality where they're like okay i want to buy 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 this is the thing i want i need help and um, the pain's that desperate like okay yeah, i really need help with this i'm sick of waiting i'm sick of hanging around but at the same side of it what a lot of business owners completely forget to do is when they're marketing only between one and three percent of people that they're marketing to will be active buyers now but yet, what about the other ninety-seven percent of people that aren't active now, but could be next week, next month, maybe some six months down the line? And people forget about all those type of people. So if you are, if you do collect leads and you do kind of build out an email list, or if you build out kind of like a, a list on Facebook, almost like an invisible list, through because that's what you do with your Facebook Pixel, and um, you can retarget these people, you can keep your content in front of them, and eventually they might actually say, okay, now I'm ready. So now I've built, I understand, I trust this person now that I, I want to go to them for help. Whereas you get a lot of business owners who don't do that. They'll just kind of like have one attempt. Okay, one one shot. They'll get mm. one, three percent of people buy and then move on. Okay, now this person, no one else, must they mustn't be interested. So I'll just kind of ignore them forever now. And that's unfortunately how, how a lot of people kind of treat it. But then like you say, the treating the customers who have already become customers, they're your best customers for going selling other products and services too as well so it's, yeah it's a lot easier to sell to those type of people <laughs> yeah and i think you know it's all about generating that warm audience and i think when people hear about that is that it was almost a little bit of a light bulb moment for them because i think they're aware of it but perhaps they're just not putting it into practice necessarily yeah it's, it is the hardest thing to put things into practice so we all kind of have a general knowledge of things that we should be doing it's easy to forget them as well, but it's almost like, well, how do I do this? How do I now take this into a practical element? And at least with funnels, it, it almost helps to skip that process a little bit because the way funnels work is that you're actually upselling people. I don't like the word upselling because it does sound a bit salesy, but it is what it is. Mm. And you're, you're offering that next step of the value ladder immediately rather than waiting like months down the line. And that just really helps you do, that really helps you just capture the, the people, your audience, that where they're at. Some might just want the free stuff, but some might actually be wanting to buy today. And you can't, you don't know that until you offer it to someone. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of helps get that done immediately. Yeah, I think that's a great way to reframe it because, you know, with from people that I've spoken to in the community, the one thing that they always tend to get stuck on is the idea of being a saleswoman or a salesman. And there's quite a negative connotation that's attached to that, um, almost that, you know, sales is a bad thing. And I think if you think of it, as you said, offering like a tiered service, so you've kind of got your level one selling pitch, which is obviously for someone who perhaps is just making a, an introduction, perhaps they're not ready at that point to invest any more monetary wise or effort time wise. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to have people who are ready to make a deeper investment. So you're offering them the level two, the, the level three. So it's yeah. just diversifying, you know, what you're actually offering to your customer base. Yeah, I think one of the best examples I've heard of is um, is using a dentist as an example. So you might get hooked by your dentist for a free teeth cleaning session. Whilst you're in that the dentist, they might go, oh, actually, um, your teeth are a little bit yellow with these smoke type of thing. And you're like, your teeth are yellow? No, like, I can't be having that. Well, well we offer a, a teeth whitening kit or something. That's an upsell immediately. But they're not upselling just for the sake of upselling. They're upselling because they want to provide extra value to the client. They want to help them have beautiful white teeth. And then, they might, then the next one might be, well, actually, there's um, a little bit, now I won't say the word, the word wonky, but <laughs> that we could help make your teeth beautiful and straight again type of thing. And um, would you want that service? So it's just almost, yes, the customer has a pain that they even know or they don't know about as of yet. And it's just helping them realize that and then give them a solution that works. But with utilizing funnels, what most people don't realize is that you're not the salesperson anymore. 
it's like having a team of salespeople for you who do the selling for you. So it's not like you're the one on the phone, uh, you know, do you want this product? Do you want this service? Um, how about this? Which is very, which really, lot, most people don't like doing that whatsoever because it is selling. You, you do feel like you're, no one likes to ask for money at the end of the day. I don't know if it's just us being Brits, but we, we no one seems to like to ask for any money when we're on the phone. So it's a lot easier to have a system and a process do that for you. And at the same time, because it's a system and because it's a process, you get predictable results that you can analyze and improve. And that's the key thing about it. So if you know that this page is currently converting at 10%, well, what can I do to get it to 12% to 15%? And you just make little tweaks and it kind of save it and proves over and over and over again. Yeah, I think that, that provides massive value, doesn't it, in terms of just having some kind of analytics that you can be looking at. Because I think all the time people are almost kind of selling without even knowing it. You know, we have conversations with people in our business networks all the time in terms of having a dialogue. And, you know, inadvertently, you're actually trying to find out people's pain points from having these dialogues. But what you then can't do is go back and revisit the dialogue and actually break that down into quantitative data that you can kind of keep retweaking. So I think it's the same principle but the funnels, like you said, does allow and opens itself up to that process of refinement. Yeah, definitely. So it, you can even just change a little piece of copy on a web page, on a funnel page, and then that could massively increase your conversions. And normally that one little piece of copy, which we'll touch on later, is, um, is the headline. So immediately when people land on that page, what is this thing at the top saying? That has to resonate with people immediately. So like we've seen with the back pain issue, so it has to be something that really resonates with people who have a back pain. If they're coming and they've got a bad head or they've got a bad neck, they're not the right client for that funnel. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have another funnel directing them in for that one problem. So like all these things kind of work together. Um, but that's the thing with marketing. People always think that with marketing, they need to have, they need to target as many people as possible. And let's literally just target everyone that we can to kind of you know, shoot now arrows, arrows everywhere as, as, as the saying goes. But with marketing, it's not about that. It's being ridiculously specific, talking to that one customer's pain point and everything else from there still talks about that pain point, still talking, just providing more value that can help them solve that pain point, either better, faster, and you know cheaper if there's a way, or like most people either give people options to do it themselves or we'll help you with that problem. That's normally what the upsell is. Here's some options for you to do it yourself or come to us, we're experts at it. We help you do it by X, Y, Z. And that's what most people do with the upsells. Yeah, so, I think everyone's been exposed to that kind of funnel at some point in another, particularly kind of the entrepreneurial community as well. <laughs> um, but just kind of tracing back to, so obviously we've discussed a lot about pain points and how we kind of use this as a basis to construct a funnel. So. You've mentioned about having different funnels for different pain points. I'm just wondering exactly how far you would take that in terms of how many funnels you would have, you know, exactly how refined do you get with the pain points? How many pain points or funnels could you have for a particular client avatar, for example? As many as, as, many as you need, to be honest. I mean, if you can talk about a couple of different pain points in one funnel, then that's fine. Talk about it. So, you know, if, if, for example, a lot of coaches who I work with, um, they talk about the pains of their customers. And some of the pains are that you know, they don't enjoy their work, that they're not getting paid enough, that um, they want a freedom lifestyle and so on. So there's quite a lot of pain points in there. And they talk about all that in one because their solution helps them solve all those pain points. So if your solution can help people with multiple pain points and can talk about those pain points in there, but if you go too wide, and um, it, it just doesn't resonate with anyone at that point. So if you try to go really wide with this messaging with your pain points, people are big, people might go, yeah, that one resonates with me, but these other 10 don't. And it's like, so uh, is this right for me now? I don't know, I'm, I'm confused. And it, what a confused mind eyes. So the more specific you can keep it, the better. Um, so really, as you mentioned, knowing who you're targeting, knowing what the objective is of why you're targeting that people, what pain point are you solving and what's your solution to help them overcome that pain point is, is key. So once you kind of know that, you can, it's a lot easier to kind of go through the funnel at that point then and work, work, work out what type of offers you can make and solutions you can make for people. 
Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, a lot of um, to do with marketing is really about really getting to know your avatar really well. So this is something I've asked some of the other guest speakers and I, and I will just kind of repeat this question to you. Are there any questions that you would advise that people be asking themselves when they're thinking about drilling down and trying to add flesh to their avatar? So almost kind of that brainstorming process. It's a funny one, this, because I, I hear some experts who say, don't go too deep into this, just get the basics of it. But then there's some other ones. So a lot of people say, what's the point in knowing what film my avatar likes? Like, who really cares about that? Like, is that really going to help them solve their pain? That, who then, cares well, about film? <laughs> yeah, like film. But the thing is, here's a good example for you. So if, if I'm targeting for, let's say, entrepreneurs, and I think, okay, well, look, my target avatar probably likes the Wolf of Wall Street. If I use a picture of the Wolf of Wall Street or a quote, it's going to resonate with them. And they ah, cool, I like Wolf of Wall Street, I resonate that, what's this about? So the image, let's say we're running an ad for this example, the, the ad itself could be an image of um, you know, playing with fun money, and he does that <laughs> as part of the film, and then that, that stops me in my tracks. Now I go read the copy. And in the copy, the, the, the copy itself, that's where we start talking about the pain points and the solution. So it's so important to kind of just really know who it is you're targeting, you know, what gender are they, what age are they, because the age is going to kind of determine what platforms you advertise their name on, what are their interests, what are their likes, who else do they follow? So, you know, are they following any other type of um, you know, leaders in the industry, any other experts? What other community groups are they part of? Because one thing people do forget about sometimes is, okay, I've got my avatar, this is who I want. But then the second job after that is, well, where do I find them? And that's like, well, once you know where, once you know who they are and where to find them, it's almost just like tapping into a gold stream at that point. If you can find out where they are online or offline and just advertise there and keep being consistent with your advertising and your messaging, and then they will just come to you. But it just takes time again. It's going back to the principle that we talked about before. You can't just do it. You can't just have one post in there. And then, okay, it didn't work. I didn't get any leads. It's like consistency, building up that relationship, building up that authority. Yeah. So, yeah, did that, did that answer the question? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's so interesting to hear um, everybody's take. Uh, I think, you know, almost frustratingly, everyone gives a slightly different answer. Um, but I think that's just simply because there is no real right answer. I think, you know, there's arguments to go one way or another. So it's always interesting to hear a, another perspective on that for sure. Yeah. And it just helps people to refine their process a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So I think with regards to, you mentioned about, you know, it not being an overnight process. And I think most people would almost be expectant of that in terms of you've got to allow a bit of patience and time to refine the process when using funnels. But for those people that perhaps in the community as off the back of this video are thinking about looking a little bit deeper into funnels, what is the kind of timeline that you'd advise that people should really start to, you know, expect to see some kind of more tangible results? Right, so uh, this is a bit of a tricky one, I guess. Um, so, uh, number one, if, if you haven't built a funnel, you should have one right now, end of question, okay, because there's no reason why you shouldn't have one. If you're looking to get new clients, they are the ultimate method for doing that. That's it. No matter if you're looking to get people on the phone, looking to sell them your products or services immediately, it's the, only, it's the best way to do it. But we've got on the timeline. So, Timeline, it varies massively. It's all about traffic. If somebody's getting five people to visit that page a day compared to somebody that's getting a thousand people to visit that page a day, it's like, which one's going to get results quicker? The one who's getting a thousand, they're going to know what works bad. So actually, I was just having this conversation with a client of mine this morning about his, his potential ad spend. So he was thinking, okay, I've got my funnel set up now. But now I want to go start spending money on ads. So he was his thought process was, okay, I'm going to spend 200 pounds per month. But bear in mind, he was selling a product that was worth £1,500. So I said to him, his break-even point, so we're getting to the maths now, his break-even point is £1,500. So if he spends anything less than £1,500 to acquire one customer, he's in profit now. If he spends more, it's, he's in negative. But it could take him seven months of spending £200 to find out that answer. Does that make sense? So... You know, 200 pounds times seven and, yeah. and a half in this case is 1500 pounds. So if he if he spent seven months, if he spent five months spending 200 pounds, 
didn't have a customer, that doesn't mean his funnel's not working. It just means he hasn't yet drove enough traffic to it. What mm -hmm. if he spends two thousand pounds, three thousand, and then okay, well actually I haven't got, I haven't gained the customer now. Yeah, okay, then now there's a problem. But realistically, the whole purpose of a funnel is yeah, you want to be spending one pound on ads and generally getting two pounds back out of it. And that's what a funnel really helps you do because it's specific, it's got one goal in mind, it's, it helps increase the average order value of every lead and every customer you get because of the additional upsells that you're adding on at the end of it. And it's really key to kind of understand that, that, that that's how marketing works in general, whether or not you are advertising in a magazine or on Facebook or on Google. If you don't understand your break-even point and how much you're willing to spend on that, the timeline just varies massively. So if he yeah. said, okay, I'm going to spend £1,500 in his next 30 days and then didn't get any results. Well, his timeline is now 30 days. It's not seven months. So it's really, it varies massively. And that's so scary for people. It's really scary for people to think, wait, well, I've got to spend up to £1,500 before I know whether this thing works. I've got to risk £1,500. It's like, yeah, unfortunately. But mm. who's to say you spend £10 and you don't make a sale? Who's to say that? Who's to say you don't you, you spend a hundred pounds, two hundred pounds, five hundred pounds, and you, and you and you make a sale? If that's the case, they will want to a winner. <laughs> yeah. Just repeating that, keep repeating it, and consistency. Um, I think, like you said, it's um, it comes all back down to kind of mindset and psychology, doesn't it? I think you know when using that example of the two hundred pounds spend over the seven point five months, is that you know to the brain that's going to seem a lot more palatable because it just thinks you know oh, two hundred pounds, even though it's still going to you know equate to the same amount of money, actually feels better to me than the initial injection of fifteen hundred. <laughs> but then, like you said, because you know you're you're uh, potentially not getting as much traffic you've also then got the added cost of the time that you've lost so i think it really boils down to whether you also see your time as a currency the same way that you do money you cut out at the last second oh, did I? that was like the most profound bit <laughs> <laughs> that was like the einstein moment i'll repeat that for you um oh, so i was saying about um obviously you know if you're looking at you know potentially having a lower spend and for whatever reason the ad doesn't work out particularly well is that obviously you've lost that additional time so i think it will boils down to whether you actually see your time as a currency as well as your money yeah definitely there's a lot of people out there who who will promote what's known as like a five pound a day of facebook ad campaign but they are forgetting that principle what i've just talked about you spend five pound a day all you like but if you're selling a product that's worth to two thousand pounds it's going to take a long time to figure that out whether or not it's working or not potentially but if you're selling a product that's you know, worth a hundred pounds two hundred pounds three hundred pounds then you're going to understand your break-even point a lot sooner because if you're spending five pounds a day and you in your products are only worth a hundred pounds and you're going to find that out you know a lot quicker five pounds a day and um, so yeah it's, it's within a within a month or two really you're going to find that out a lot quicker at that point so it's really important to understand well how much is this thing i'm selling worth it's worth two hundred pounds, three hundred pounds, four hundred pounds, so on. So that that is my break-even point right there. If my mm. product is worth X, then I need to be willing to spend up to that much before I know whether or not it's a legitimate campaign. But going back to the example of comparing, let's say, a funnel to just a, a web page selling this product or service. So if we're driving traffic to a web page, I just promote this one thing, this product or service. And let's just say this five hundred pounds, just for simplicity's sake. If you're immediately trying to sell a five hundred pound product to someone with no kind of authority, no relationship to that person, they don't understand who you are. Then what are they going to do? They're going to be like, "It's a lot of money. It's a bit skeptical. I'll go have a look at elsewhere. I'll go see if there's anywhere cheaper because it's like a commodity in that case." But if you utilize a funnel to bring them up your value ladder, give them some free advice first, position yourself as somebody who's helpful. I'm an expert. Here's some advice that I'm willing to give you. Then once they kind of capture that information, then upsell them on the next type of product or service or consultation, some type of phone call. Because by getting people onto the phone, it is a lot easier to sell them higher products and services at that point, because you can obviously speak to people and you can bring your emotions across. Um, but it's all about the journey, really, the customer journey and the customer platform. And then and just kind of knowing your numbers almost, it's the, probably the most vital thing that most people don't do when it comes to marketing, don't understand the numbers behind it. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that they're two 
hugely important points in terms like you said using the numbers i think sometimes almost kind of i know i definitely get a bit scared of the math sometimes and i think that's perhaps where potentially making sure that you have got some kind of support in terms of you know a funnels expert can be really useful um but looking at the analytics making sure that you're constantly refining the process and the other thing as well that you said about you know really making sure that you're utilizing funnels to build that rapport and i think people almost kind of forget that is that they're in love with their own products and they know their product intimately and they always say that no one's going to be a bigger fan of your product than you are or perhaps your mum yeah, yeah. Um, but essentially that to a cold audience you know nobody really cares about your brand nobody really cares about you know what your product is you've got to actually you know make sure you're getting into the trenches with them and actually relaying that over to what their specific pain points are and also building that trust and credibility with them that perhaps arguably other advertising mediums don't do that so well no they don't and I think an example that I use quite a lot when I'm talking to people is if if you imagine a complete stranger coming up to you on the streets um, and offering you a Rolex for five thousand pounds, how would that make you feel? How what would that make you think? You no, know, if we take away the Rolex, they offered you something for twenty pounds. How would that make you feel? You'd be like, you know, scam, scam. That's fake. I don't believe you because they've built no trust. They've built no relationship. They haven't positioned themselves as an authority. Whereas you know, if if you knew that person worked at Goldsmith Jewelers. And they had a big sale on and like you had a relationship with this person they came up to you oh we've got the sale on at the moment xyz they oh well you take them a lot more serious especially if you have a relationship you might actually even go to the store and look look at the information and find out more and potentially buy and um, it's all that relationship is key and it's the one thing people aren't willing to invest in at all so they were they're willing to invest a pound to kind of to promote a sale yeah, but they're not willing to invest a pound into advertising to build a relationship, which could lead mm. to a sale. And that completely, people miss miss that big time. And that's what makes them only, that's what makes people, conversion rates only ever one to three, one, between one and 3%, rather than, you know, 10%, 20%, or 97% potentially with that type of audience. Mm. But it just takes time. Everything kind of takes time. And it, there's no such thing as an overnight success. If anyone ever says, run this ad or run this campaign and you know, you'll make ten thousand pounds the next 30 days if you're targeting a cold audience with kind of no um who don't know you at all that's like that's going to be very difficult unless you generally run some type of advertising campaign that builds that relationship very quick builds that trust that authority very quick you know, there's ways and means you can do that of course such as your know, testimonials running webinars getting to know people like what me and you are doing now and um, people get to know us more through this medium, through video, get to trust us more, things like that. So it's a lot, it all depends on how you really go about doing it. Yeah. And I think that that time is, is such a crucial aspect as well, is that rather than seeing it almost as a negative, is it almost kind of see it as integral to the process because it's that kind of drip feed, isn't it? It's occupying people's mind space enough so they don't get kind of, you know, so they get to know you, they get to build, you know, credit, credibility, authority, but not so much that you kind of get up in people's faces and you become a little bit frustrated with that. Yeah, definitely. If you're, if you're up in people's faces trying to sell straight away, they the chances are that it's going to be really difficult to kind of build that relationship any further because mm. they've immediately got a negative emotion with you whereas if you come to the relationship as in i'm here to help mm. that's it i'm not asking for anything of you whatsoever just i'm here to help take this thing hopefully you get some good results with it then that's like wow this person's actually likes us and they're, they're willing to help and if if the thing is good and you actually get them some results so let's say it is some type of ebook which gives them top tips on how to solve a lower back pain or some stretches or some ideas on that then they're going to actually in their, their heads they're going to think oh well this was free what's it going to be like if i actually pay them for their services mm. and be like if i mm. actually hire them go see them and um, you know so that's the type of emotion that, that you'll get from it whereas if you kind of just go in for the sale immediately number one you don't capture anyone as a lead so you know that's the thing with funnels if you if you you'll capture people as leads from these beginning, so that free thing that you're offering for free, you capture them as a lead. Whereas if I'm just trying to sell you immediately, the only leads I'm capturing are people that are buying my products. So yeah. I, I haven't got any opportunity to build a relationship with everyone else. Whereas if somebody's a lead, but they then don't buy my products, at least I've now got an opportunity to build a relationship with all those leads that are like kind of on mm. my list. And that have shown yeah. interest in that they have a problem that this thing that I'm giving them solves. They wouldn't download this thing or they wouldn't click to view it or read it if they didn't have that problem mm. so 
it's about building that. So as soon as you've got them as a lead, it's like take them up that that customer journey, build a relationship, nurture it. And um, it does, like I said, what what people are probably thinking now is yeah, that just sounds like it takes forever though. Like that's so much work to do. Like honestly, it's it 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 can be, but once you develop your process and your system and it's systemized, it's 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 like you do it once and you let it run and then you make tweaks, you make tweaks. You don't have to do it, it's not you doing it every day, trying try new things every day. It's a system, it's a process, it's an automation, and then it does it for you. Yeah, it, I think like you said, uh, I, I picked this up somewhere, I think it was actually from, from Rob Moore or one of the progressive seminars, was it's a little bit like the launch of a rocket in the fact that just to get started and to get off the ground, you need so much more effort. But mm. then once you kind of, you know, once you're airborne, you're pretty much plain sailing. And I think also the comparison to be made is that obviously it does take time to get the processes embedded but likewise relative to perhaps to some other marketing mediums is that you still get that same fast track process yeah so you get the fast you get the opportunity that's probably one of the biggest things you get that you get the opportunity to build that relationship with the customer whereas with other marketing processes you just don't it's um because you're trying to bypass that first step that first important step and then what a lot of people do for the start of their funnel is they'll just run a campaign not selling anything so in my industry what people generally do is they'll, they'll the campaign will just be a free video come and watch this free video or it might even just be a video on youtube so for example we could take this live right now and run it as an ad not asking for anything whatsoever but it's putting us in front of our ideal target audience and once you watch it they can be like why why would i watch this if i wasn't interested in what we're talking about mm. but with the use of analytics and, and Facebook these days, we can actually see the people who have watched it, like 50%, and we can now just retarget those with our offer. So we're almost like, well, that 50% aren't interested in what we're talking about whatsoever, but this 50% are. So now yeah. that's that 50%, our offer, our special offer, that's our ideal target market right there. They are our clients who we want, who are obviously interested in the solution that we're talking about. Yeah. So there's quite a few different ways to go about doing it. But if you, for example, if you run that video as an ad and that is a, it's a system again, it's not something that you would need to do day in, day out. You run it, you let it, you let it run itself. It's an automation. From there, you might bring people into the funnel, into the first step of the funnel. And then again, that it's everything we're talking about today is, is fully automated to a certain degree. It's not like you need to do it every single day. It's not like, okay, I need to blog every week or I need to create a new video every day. Um, it, it does it all for you in that in that sense. So I hope that kind of takes a lot of the, the stress off of people thinking it sounds like a lot of work. It mm. might be a lot of work kind of once, then after that, it's not, it's tweaking, it's editing. It's yeah. improvements. Yeah, I think that's the key point to put over really is that you know you're having to babysit a funnel. You know, like you said, it's an automated process. There is going to be a certain effort that's demanded in order to get everything in place. And to obviously, like you said, keep testing things like the ad copy, the image, etc., just to make sure that you are getting maximum value for that. But once you've done it, you've done it. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's so we've spoken quite a lot about, um, obviously, what we should do to create a successful funnel. What I tend to like to do with these kind of series is actually flip that on its head. And maybe talk about two or three points that you perhaps most see commonly in terms of mistakes when people are producing funnels. Well, the biggest mistake is not using one whatsoever. <laughs> it's simple right. as that. Then overwhelmed and be like, oh, I don't know what to do. Mm. And it's not mm. working. I'd say the second biggest mistake is trying to be perfectionist. And you're they, they might think, oh, it's ugly. I don't like the look of it. It's a bad design. I don't want to, I'm not showing this to anyone. I'm not putting it out there. And at the end of the day, if you don't put it out there, you don't know if it works. The only way you ever know if something works is if your customers pull out their wallet and they pay for the service. That's it. People might come, oh, that's really pretty. It looks nice. But if it doesn't convert, it's it's pointless as a marketing medium. Mm. Um, so like, what, what, the key thing, I think, with most funnels is to keep it simple and try not to overcomplicate things and stay on, stay on point. So we mentioned about that one type of key point that we're talking about that pain point that one yeah. solution to the pain point and always just have one goal for every step of the page so the reverse of that would be asking people to do multiple things on that page so everything on that page should be you know click here to you know, download this ebook click here to watch this webinar click here to buy this service this product it shouldn't be do you want to do this or do you want to do this or do you want to do this it's like 
don't give people them options when you're first getting them as a lead. Down mm. the line, you can give people other options once they've kind of became a customer. But to capture that lead initially and to build that relationship, and you just have to be really focused in on that one key pain point, really. And normally, I think I mentioned briefly earlier on, it's the, it's the headline that does that 90% of the time. So, I mean, do you understand what I mean by the headline? Yes, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah. So I know what you mean by the headline. I think what would be interesting to know is not to do too deep a dive on this, because like I said there will be a part two where we go more so into the specifics. But, you know, let's take the headline as an example. Um, what tends to work best in terms of a headline? The headline, obviously, the point of the page, we're talking about one specific pain point. Yeah. I'll give you one of my favorite examples of a headline, and it's, to do with like the, the PT world. So um, how to lose 30 pounds in 30 days without ever stepping foot in the gym. That yeah. touches on a few points there. So how to, okay, I'm gonna learn something, lose 30 pounds in 30 days, wow, okay, I, yes, I want to lose weight and I want to lose it quick. 30 pounds in mm -hmm. 30 days sounds like brilliant. And I hate going to the gym and this is telling me I don't need to go to the gym. I'm interested, like I want to read more. That, that is key right now for for the, the headline must capture it. And that's one of the best ways to go about doing it. And it's one of the most widely one widely known, widely used headlines in the industry. Right. And you've got to go how to insert whatever big benefit thing that they're looking for that your prop that your the thing on your page can help them with. And you use the word without, and then you insert something that they don't want that they're looking to avoid. So that could be, you know, how to um how to get shredded six pack abs whilst with, without giving up on donuts, something like that. So again, if you know that you're Sounds good to me. Or without giving up on beer or alcohol, it's like, it's if this is why you need to know your ideal clients. Because if you knew your ideal clients are, are like Krusty Cream mad, like the, the by mentioning the word donuts or that word and that phrasing, that company in your headline, it's really just going to resonate with them like really mm. a lot. And that's why it's so key to understand again, your ideal client avatar. Because a lot of people skip that step thinking, I just want to target anyone. Like I'll see who kind of comes to the page, but you have to, re you really do have to understand that ideal client avatar um, before you kind of start any other step of your marketing. So I normally say don't spend a penny on ads and don't even start building your website, your funnel, your marketing material, not even your business, not even your business card, unless you really understand who it is you're looking to speak to in your target. Because mm -hmm. um, everything, everything done from your logo or the name of your company has to kind of resonate with your ideal client avatar. I think on that, that just touching on that, actually, a lot of people get worried thinking, but if I have a niche too much, I'm missing out on it loads of opportunities. Yeah. But before you can, it's almost like you have to be able to like crawl before you can walk. You have to be able to walk before you can run. You have to be known for something before you can be known for like everything. Mm -hmm. You just try and go out there and be known. Okay. This, this person, this company does all these things. People are like, okay, yeah, but they're not known for anything. In that case, it's like, it's like, if you have a if you have a boiler problem, are you going to call the handyman? Are you going to call like a boiler specialist? <laughs> that you need this boiler specialist. So by niching when you're first getting started, it allows you to really target to one audience, get known well in that industry, but then branch out, branch out, branch out into other sectors. And the chances are that 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 target audience who you were targeting originally also have needs in these other branches in these other sectors. So it's never like don't don't be afraid to really just go niche when you're first starting out. Yeah. Yeah. I think like you said, if you almost kind of see it as like a building block process, um, mm -hmm. it's obviously the process itself is going to be, be refined and things are going to get, you know, you're going to get more return. But likewise, you can't forget that you're still building credibility each time you're running these kind of campaigns, you know? Yeah. So you're mm -hmm. kind of building up again, that online presence that everybody speaks about. Mm -hmm. It's, it's quite difficult to do, to build an online presence. If you go about it, the traditional route of blogging, blogging, um, you know, posting a lot type of thing, but it's all, it is kind of needed still because if somebody does the search here, they want to kind of look to see that you've got an online presence. They want to see that you're active on social media. They want to see that you're creating content because that positions you as an expert in that subject matter. Mm -hmm. And if you're not really an expert in it, you're going to struggle to compete against people who are positioning themselves as experts. It's like, what makes you unique if you're not doing that? Um, it's all about pe allowing people to kind of get to know you better, resonate with you more as well, and just understand that what it is that you do, you offer as a product, you offer as a service, and what 
what you help people with. So I help people with funnels and online marketing. <laughs> and so that's like my special uh, speciality. I know bits about ads, advertising, Facebook ads and things that got an SEO, but just little bits. It, it's not what I'm a specialist in whatsoever. Mm. I, I don't want to be a specialist in that either. It's kind of, it's, I'll, I'll leave that to other people who are get excited about those things. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely key to be the niche down on that and to yeah. be known for something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think very much that delicate balance, isn't it? In terms of you can afford just to spread yourself a little bit wider, but you still ultimately want to have that kind of key specialism that people are at least kind of touching base with you on the first initial contact. Exactly. And, and people who you will still attract people who aren't who aren't that target audience, does that make sense? So yeah. you know, I attract people wanting help with website development, I don't do website development whatsoever, but they've seen me talk about marketing, they've seen me talk about online stuff. I'll just, I'll, I'll be honest with them and say, it's not something I specialize in, but I know someone who does, like here's what they do, or um, I might obviously just tell them what about what I do, and again, it might suit their needs more better, it might, might suit their needs better um, than what they actually thought they needed. Um, so yeah, so there's definitely quite a lot of things you can do there, but it's just kind of key not to get don't and um, feel daunted by it all, mm -hmm. by all the process and all the steps. It's, it's kind yeah. of easier than it sounds. I think in terms of coming back to that idea of being daunted. Um, so again, one thing that I really like to do just to make sure that we're kind of taking the the theory that we've put forward in terms of the chat that we've had, and then kind of bringing that into the practical arena is I often ask our speakers to perhaps decide upon maybe two or three action points that people who have listened to the video and are interested in taking the funnels a bit further in terms of, you know, looking at their knowledge base and possibly getting even a funnel set up. So what would your two or three recommendations be for actions that our community can take now just to get them a little bit further along in their process? Well, st step, it all depends on what level they're at, obviously, but step number one is kind of work out who your ideal client avatar is. Um, step number two, where can I find them, really? Um, understanding what your offering is as well. So does your offering resonate with that client avatar? So kind of make sure that they match together, that your offering is something that this avatar wants. If they're not, you're either going to have to change your offering or you're going to have to change your, change your avatar to kind of make it mash, to make it mm -hmm. work for each other. So they the... the more key components to kind of building your funnel once you have that that almost writes all of your copy for you when it comes to developing your funnel it almost writes your ads for you because you're going through you're like okay well what are my customers pain points what do they like what do they desire who are they and what industry are they in what sector are they in so on and so on and um, so by doing that it, it almost takes care of 75 percent of the other stuff for you and then after that it is more of a case of just thinking about um, building that relationship with the customer, that customer journey. So if you, it, it all depends really what you're selling and what you're offering, depending on what funnel is right for you, because there isn't really just one funnel up there. There's, there's quite a lot of different ones, to be honest. So what you're selling. So we, if we take like, you know, maybe say a physio as an, as an example, selling a consultancy service for their first type of sales that they want to do. So they're targeting a cold audience. Using the example we talked about earlier on, they might think about, but what type of, we call it lead magnet, so hook, thing, can I offer my customers for free? Can I create an ebook? Can I create a little document which helps people with some exercises they can do at home? Um, that could be a blog, that could be a downloadable thing where people have to exchange their name and email address to get it, which is probably the best way to actually capture leads. Or that could be a video that you create and you kind of share on social media, you put some money behind it and you advertise, and then you go down the route of, retargeting anyone that's kind of watched the video to a certain point and then showing them your actual offer to come in for a consultation. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a lot of people in your industry obviously offer free consults and free consultations. And and that's 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 what people use as a lead magnet normally. So that's like so they're giving away their time as their most valuable precious resources for free as a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just change that think well actually no I can offer a free video or some a video series with some top tips in or an ebook something and I can do that way for free and anyone who wants that I then upsell them on a consultation yeah to come in for a consultation with all the benefits of it potentially at a reduced rate rather than free then again it's it's better because you're getting higher quality customer you're capturing more leads initially you're getting a better quality customer coming in and then because they're paying for your services and things and then you again once they're in you'll you'll try and get them 
um, to come back for more more of your services. Yeah. But again, yeah, we'll and I think that's more of that in episodes. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's one of those things where you just mentioned about obviously the digital product uh, products there. Um, so just kind of can skim past that quite quickly is that, you know, with the digitized products, it again helps to lower the burden of funnels. So one of the things that you mentioned in terms of an obstruction to, to business owners using funnels is because they think it's going to be particularly time intensive, that, you know, it's going to take a lot of effort to set up. It's going to take a lot of effort to kind of keep the process going. But if you are looking at potentially looking at like, you know, digitized products like the ebook, is that it's all about you know trying to reduce that time burden, isn't it? So yeah, ebooks again that itself can feel like a hard thing to make if you've never done one before. So you know how do I create an ebook? Now that's a new question. That's a new thing. Well, what do I do if I if you're saying go out there and create an ebook? Well, well how do I do that? It's really difficult mm. to do that. Yeah, it, it's difficult if you don't know the answer, of course. But once you kind of know the answer, it's easy. So all I'd really recommend if anyone is wanting to go down that route is just Think about the one pain point that their ideal client has, just one of them, and just list out some steps that somebody can do to overcome that pain. Mm -hmm. And that's it, ebook done. List them out. You can go to Fiverr, you can hire someone for you know, 20, 30 pounds to kind of take that that raw copy that you've just created and turn it into a nice looking ebook that you can give away for free. The next step after that is, well, how do I now create a page? How do I give that away for free? How do I do all that type of things? But again, um, We'll go into that in some type of um, other other video down the line. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that pretty much brings us to our part two. Um, so as mentioned right back at the beginning of the chat, uh, Mark and I are going to going to try and break some of this information down. Um, it's obviously the part one, which is today's chat, and then a part two, which is going to be for those of you that are interested and perhaps you've captured your interest in the talk today is trying to just do a bit of a deeper dive into funnels, how to construct one, the kind of real nitty gritty of funnel building and what you need to be thinking about in a part two series. But I believe Mark, you've got a bit of a challenge for the community. What was that, sorry? Well, yeah. <laughs> you've got a bit of a challenge for our community to look at before a part two. The, the seven day challenge, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've currently got what's known as like a seven day funnel building challenge. Um, where I do actually take people through obviously each step-by-step -step process of the funnel building, just to kind of generate a lead magnet funnel. And it is this process of working out who your client is, you know, what type of content are they interested in, what's their pain points, and then building out the funnel. So how can I capture them as a lead? Then once you've captured the lead, it's all about just nurturing them. And yeah, so there is a, there is a, um, a, a funnel building challenge that I currently have for that. It's not obviously specific for entrepreneurs, <laughs> but it is, it is it is something that people can definitely do that's going to be helpful for them. Um, but I know me and you down the line certainly will create something similar, which is a lot more specific. Yeah, we've got lots and lots of plans ahead of us, haven't we, in terms of offering value to the community. So that's going to be a really exciting development, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so for those that perhaps wanted to look at the seven day challenge, what would be the best way for, for them to connect with that? Um, if we just add a link to this in the description of this video or in the comments of the video, we'll certainly add it in there that we can go and, and have a little look at it. Sure. Awesome. So would you say that it would be good to look at that prior to part two of our talk series? Is that something that's going to be relevant based upon what we've talked about today? I think it will be. I think if people actually go look at it, at least it'll help mm. them understand the whole, the first few sections there. So the, the client avatar, building that relationship with them. Um, the funnel itself does go into actually building out the funnel as well. But well, that's a bit too, people aren't ready for that step. Um, although it might it might open their eyes up just to see how easy it actually is mm. using the right software and the right tools to do it. Then it's, def it, it's definitely worth having a look at either way, even if you don't take any action, but you go and you look at it. And then yeah. that just things gets your mind prepared. Again, also write any questions you have down because you know, obviously we can, we can certainly answer some questions during the next live as well. Cool, yeah, so, yeah. I think it'd be really useful for people just to potentially hop onto that and just start breaking down some of those mental barriers in terms of at least just familiarizing yourself with the content. Um, because like Mark said, at least you can then start to eke out any particular points that you want to discuss a little bit more in depth. And obviously we'll try and make sure the content is as specific to those pain points as best as we possibly can. So if you do have any Q&A for Mark, then obviously make sure you just pop in those down into the comments. And Mark's a member of our community anyway, so I'm more, he'd be more than happy to answer those for you. 
We'll make sure to put the link down for the Funnel Building 7-Day Challenge. So for those of you guys that have you know, become really interested in terms of funnel building today, make sure you're hopping onto that before we go onto our part two of today's series. And we'll be making sure to put up a notification as to when that part two is going to be once we've decided. Yeah, well, um, hopefully no technical difficulties. That's it. <laughs> it's all a refinement awful. process. Yeah, it would be great to also know if, if there is people in this group who have tried funnels before, if you've hired someone, if you've tried mm -hmm. to build them yourself, you know, if you just think they don't work, if you're like, okay, I've tried it, it's it's garbage, it doesn't work, just, you know, I'd love to kind of hear your, your opinions on them. Um, and, you know, because there is some people out there who have done that, but it's not that they don't work a lot of the time. It is generally there's just a couple of tweaks that they could have made just to kind of get yeah. better results or they just didn't understand their client avatar. The most 90% of the time is probably just down to that. Mm. Yeah. There's usually some kind of kink in the armor somewhere. So we'd say don't give up on funnels just yet. <laughs> if you do feel a little bit um, lost with them, because we are here to help in any way that we possibly can. So thank you to everybody who's tuned in today. If you are watching the video back on replay, then I would ask you just to put a little hashtag replay in the comments box. It just helps us to obviously track, you know, how much traffic we're getting to these kind of videos. And we want to try and make the content as relevant to the community as we possibly can to add as much value as we possibly can as well. So thank you for tuning in, guys, and giving us a bit of your time. Um, any questions, Mark will make sure to hop onto there and answer those for you in due course. Otherwise, we will see you for part two very soon. Yes, thank you, everyone. All right, thanks, guys. Take care.